Trump no. is not agreeing Think with us. Think weather. That's why we're yeah. all now? Place. Really? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> you did now you don't want to. Yeah. Huh? Maybe I don't yeah. feel like it. Maybe I'm just over it. Yeah. Hey, listen. It's good. Wait, wait. I'll do the weather. No. Ah, now he's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. um, we still have uh, very hot weather continuing in Southern California. That high just continues to hold and dominate our weather. And we also still have a chance of some of those. And you can see down and through the four corner states in uh, portions of uh, New Mexico and even in Nevada, we're getting some of those storms already developing in some showers. Could see some of that a little bit later on this afternoon. Uh, here we go. Seven day outlook, 89. Saturday and Sunday, those temperatures holding at about 90. On Monday, 88. Tuesday, 88 degrees. So the heat wave continues and it's even going to get warmer over the weekend, if anything. Okay. Now we're back on track, I do believe. All right. Thank you very much. But this, this is actually a really interesting conversation we're about to have. There have been reports that the Jackson family had attempted to plan an intervention for Michael Jackson just days before his death. This uh, emphasizes the difficulty of both families and professionals when it comes to dealing with addiction. Joining us is an expert from the hit show on A&E called Intervention. He's written a new book, Face It and Fix It. Welcome, Ken Seeley, this morning. Ken, good morning. And your book is a three-step plan to break free from denial and discover the life you deserve. And I think, I know it's almost cliche, but the saying is, you know, denial, the, the, really the first step is knowing that you're in denial and you got to come out of that. Exactly, exactly. Every single addict that is that surrenders to recovery, that's part of it. They have to break down that wall of denial. But the book is really designed for not only the addict, but the family. Because mm. the family sees all the yeah. red flags. We're seeing it in the media. We can constantly see it. And family members see the red flags, but they don't know the action to take. Is it that they don't know or they're too afraid? Or are they too afraid of losing their loved one? What do you find is the motivation of the, you know, we talk about the classic enabler. Yeah. What, what is the motivation behind that? What normally happens is it takes a traumatic experience experience with the family dynamics before they move. They see all the red flags, but they keep praying and saying, maybe it'll get better. Maybe this time it'll be different. And I keep hearing that over and over and over. Right. And I was working with a family three months ago. And finally, again, this week, I got a call. We need to move on this. Mm. Something happened, but we shouldn't have to wait. Until it gets that bad. We shouldn't have to wait. What about the theory, though, and, and, and it happens, and, I, and I'm sure you'll be able to know and follow through, but all of a sudden, they say, yeah, unless somebody want, doesn't want to be, unless they don't want themselves to be cured. Mm -hmm. Okay, so point. you'll be able to get the family yeah. intervention. You'll be able to get them into yeah. treatment and that. Yeah. But what's a year from now? And I love that. When people bring that up, oh, the addict isn't ready. Don't even try to help them. You know, because if they're not ready, you can't do anything. That point is so void. That, that is it's such a waste because I wasn't ready 20 years ago. They did an intervention on me and I was not ready. I was hovering around my rock bottom that they talked every addict has to yeah. hit, but I wasn't there. My intervention got me there. So you actually don't prescribe to the notion that they have to hit bottom? We create the bottom. Okay, so you create an art and that's what yep. sort of brings them front and center with their reality. Yep and they have to then make a choice. Exactly. Like on the show, they say that there was 128 episodes and 103 are still clean and sober. I believe that's because we create the rock bottom in a loving, respectful manner and raise it and present it. Whereas when people do self-admit into a treatment facility, what's happening is they go in, but they only hit the iceberg mm. of their right rock bottom. They just oh, tipped it. Yeah. We create the whole scenario and bring it into a reality. So longer recovery. Well, you talk a lot in your book about life imbalancing behaviors. Mm. What does that mean? You know, as so many people live in a darkness, they live in this pain that, that, that they bury. They cry themselves to sleep. And, and it's about, you know, balancing your life to be comfortable in the skin that you're in. Mm. And, and these are the tools in this book are the tools to help examine, to do an audit in your life, to see where the problems may stand and give you the tools to get out of that darkness, get out of that depression. I know how you're going to answer this question, but I think it, it bears repeating. Yeah. What is the number one uh, most prevalently abused drug? Uh, right now, um, the fastest growing addiction in this country is prescription meds. Mm. And, and, and we've had cases of this, obviously, mm. uh, there's concern that this was an issue with Michael Jackson. What is it, why do you think this is so pervasive and why is it so dangerous? I mean, we know it's dangerous, but explain the seriousness of this. I think people get addicted because they get a back injury or they get, you know, something happens in their life and then all of a sudden they, that feels comfortable and it's easy access when you go to a physician. I mean, I know I could go to 
a doctor and get something right now. Yeah. But I'm an addict. I can't take drugs. I cannot do that. It will kill me. So what happens is the addict goes to these doctors, or you don't even need a doctor nowadays. You could buy them on the internet. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why I believe it's the fastest growing addiction, because at some point in the addict's mind, they think it's okay. Right. Yeah, and it's not that sort of dirty buying it off the street yep. or something, you know, They're in some shady neighborhood. They're not sticking a needle yeah. in their arm yeah. of heroin. They're you can see more of Ken and the amazing work he does on a show that has really opened my mm -hmm. eyes to the world and, and life of addiction, not only the person, the addict themselves, but how it affects their families uh, on intervention on A&E. His new book is called Face It and Fix It. Uh, Ken, we really appreciate oh, the work you're doing. You. Thanks for coming thank in and talking you. to us. Thank you so much. We're going to totally change directions, Ken. We okay. really are. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, how to sip your way to healthy skin <laughs> with these.